Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about home health. We're going to be talking about specifically home health supplies, things that you need when you are out in the field, in the community, working with your patients. I've been getting a lot of questions. People have been emailing me, putting comments under the in the comment section of videos, asking me what all, if anything, your home health company should be supplying you with in regards to supplies with taking care of your patients. And my straightforward answer is that the home health company should be providing you with everything that you need to take care of your patients, with the exception of if you just have certain things that you like to work with. For me, I and then some companies will give you like a little kind of a stipend in a sense. And one of the things for the companies that I work for, it will give me a stipend for like medical supplies. So one thing that I typically purchase on my own is my own stethoscope. I'll use that for that, especially being that I work for more than one um, home health company or also being the fact that I use more than one car. So sometimes I'll keep that spare. I love to keep a spare stethoscope and a spare um, blood pressure cuff in the trunk of my car. So you can use it for uniforms, different things like that. A lot of companies don't do that. But for the most part, they should be giving you everything that you need to take care of your patients in their home. For me, it's a huge red flag if that company is not supplying you with the supplies that you need. I thought this was a really good time to do this video being that I recently started with a new home health company. I'm going to give y'all a little life update. Things have changed. A lot of things have changed, but I'll be talking about that in another video. The company that I most recently started with gave me this big, gigantic box. Oh, and I mean, big, gigantic box. Okay. Whoa. This is a really, really, I can't even show you how big it is. Okay, y'all, the box was so big and heavy, it hit the remote. So I'm going to attempt to pick this box up for you all. This is a big, heavy box. Like I said, I haven't been in it. I don't know what's up in here, but we're going to see what they gave me to stop my uh, trunk with. Okay, starting off, these are like paper towels. So you can use these for a variety of things. You can use these to dry your hands with, to wipe things off if you have a, like a disinfectant spray or something like that. Um, just, you know, different multi-purpose use. I'm think, sure, pretty sure us as nurses can figure out what to do with this. These here, these can be used as barriers. Barriers for your home health bag. Um, for your home health bag itself or for your supplies like your tablet, your cell phone, different things like that. You should be having your supplies on a waterproof barrier. So these can be used for that. Okay. Ah, a womb and skincare guidebook. Actually, I plan. Oh, wow. This is good. I plan on doing a video about some wound and skincare. I recently took a new nurse to home health, fairly new nurse with just about a year experience. And so I took her out with her and I was able to give her some helpful tips. So this will come in really uh, helpful in the field. A wound and school skincare uh, guide. These are, okay, Mepilex dressings, if you see it there. So these are really good for surgical wounds. Typically, we use these for surgical wounds. And again, this is the, the, the uh, stethoscope that they gave me. Ah, this I would only use this in case of emergencies. If something went on with my stethoscope, this is not, yeah, I wouldn't use this. Or if I had like an isolation patient, I would grab this or something like that. But this is, I have a cardiac stethoscope that I'm, I'm a little bougie right there. So that's what I would have. Gloves, medium gloves. I wear medium gloves. They should be asking you what size gloves you wear. They should definitely be supplying you with PPE supplies. This, oh, this is some prep, wound prep for the, to prep around your wounds. I love this. That's something really good. 
abdominal pads. So they gave me a box of abdominal pads. These are all abdominal pads, multi-use, especially because I see a lot of post-op surgical patients. Oh, this is a really good blood pressure cuff. So it is a really, really good blood pressure cuff. So this is a keeper and it's an adult. Uh, and they also have the adult extra large for patients that have a, a larger arm circumference, especially you get that with men. Okay, that's really good. Mask. Of course, like I said, they definitely should be supplying you with your PPE. Lances and band-aids. So they gave me that because we do see a lot of post-op patients, like I said, for ortho. And a lot of them are on warfarin or coumadin. And I take a lot of iron R's occasionally. Um, suture removal kits. These are suture removal kits. And they should have everything in there. A suture removal tray for you to remove sutures. And this one is staple. That is staple. Oh my God, I love this. Oh, if you've ever worked and used this to keep a dressing in place, I love this dressing retention tape. Ooh, I used to use this a lot. I worked at a LTAC, a long-term acute care facility. And we used this because our patients were really, really sick. And the average patient had a very severe or significant wound. So I'll discuss and talk about that when I do the wound care video. I'll go in a little bit more detail. Um, these are for blood collection vacuum containers, and then supplies that you need to draw blood with. So these are vacuum containers themselves. We all are used to those. I, ooh, I cannot tell y'all the last time that I had to take somebody's blood. Uh, each company that I usually work for usually sends the lab out, especially for a stars of care. For maybe a case manager, you would draw way more blood than me, but I only do stars of care. And with the number of stars of cares that I'm doing when I'm out, I don't be having time to drop nobody labs out. They need to get somebody else to do it. Uh, paper tape. And we definitely need these footsies. There's some more in there. I won't pull them all out. But let's make sure we this one stays with there's more in there, especially in the winter. Rain is spring, a lot of rain. So you definitely uh, some people will ask you to take your shoes off. You cannot you should not be taking off your shoes in people's homes. It is a safety hazard. So you should be covering your shoes. So they gave me some of those. Gave me plenty of those. Those more. There's more there. Uh, a Foley catheter insertion tray. For stunks of. Uh, trunk supply and you also should be ordering that to have that for your patients in the home this is just trunk supplies guys and then for to protect your eyes more ppe eye shields to protect your eyes with then i have more paper tape a pulse ox uh, what's here a irrigation tray so we need this, you will irrigate, uh, this is a 60 ml piston for irrigation. It's a lot of stuff in here, guys. A biohazard spill kit. Again, I say that if the company that you are working for, is, and there's several items in there, I'll kind of hold that up so you all can see it. If you want to uh, screenshot it, you should have these available for you in facilitated environments hospitals, long-term care facilities, and especially the same things that you would need in a facilitated environment you would need in the field. This is a, a bandage guys, mainly curl -X. This is a, a really smaller one. And ACE bandages are here. I have a small one. I have a big one here. And mainly, like I said, I see a lot of ortho patients. These come in handy, especially if I'm trying to do a pressure dressing for a patient that is having a bleeding problem when I when I first open up their case. Uh, oh yeah, these are more for wounds. Maxorb. If you have a wound that you're trying to heal and that they are doing a lot of drainage, that extra drainage you need, these come in really handy. And like I said, I'll talk about some of these more in the wound care video that I'm going to do. They gave me a up, oh, boom. Did they get fancy or did it, was this a mistake? But they gave me a second uh, blood pressure cuff. 
I love them for this. I love it for me. This is a really, really good blood pressure cuff, guys. It's a really good one. It's not one. They did not skimp out on this, okay? This is a really, really good blood pressure cuff. So you have to put it together and everything. But I love that for me. They gave me two. So you do have to assemble it. But this is a really good blood pressure cuff. Okay, I'll put that back together later. Uh, then we have Sandy Wipes, Micro Kill, Germicidal Wipes right here. So definitely you need this as part of your trunk supply. You can take these out and put them in a Ziploc bag. Or if your bag is not really filled, some people just literally put it in there and leave a little out so they can just pull for them. I suggest putting them in a Ziploc bag. You can do what you want to do, but that's, that's kind of just a little helpful hit. This is a leg bag for Foley for if you have a Foley catheter patient. And what else do we have in here? Uh, this is the drainage bag for a Foley catheter patient. This here is a waterproof barrier that you can use. Cause like I said, you should be having a waterproof barrier for your bag. So that has multi multiple uses as well. And of course we got some good old Foley Pack that as themselves. Let's see if they gave me more than one size. I have a 14 and a 16 French. So you definitely, especially if you are a case manager, this is something that I probably would rarely, rarely use. But if you're a case manager, you want to have multiple sizes. And you see the size there, 16 French and 10 ml, 14 French and 10 ml. You want to have multiple sizes in the trunk. So when you go into your office and you go into the supply room, Grab the other one's child and put it in your car. I really suggest that for case managers. I know what this is. This is a scale. You should be weighing your patients, home health nurses, especially your patients that have uh, CHF and other diseases like that, that the doctor has you in the home weighing them. Okay? And this, oh, wait a minute. Did these people give me a, I think, what is going on? This is another, yeah, another blood pressure cuff. Okay, they gave me three. I don't know if that was a mistake or what. Okay, this is a biohazard container. They also have it stocked inside there with some biohazard bags for specimens. And then there is, um, this, this one is hand soap, which you should be having in your home health bag nurses, and this one is hand sanitizer. So you definitely need this as a part of your supplies, hand soap and hand sanitizer. But you know, I'm sure they just put it in there just so it can fit. And a thermometer, digital thermometer. Bags, multi-purpose, they come in handy, especially for wound care. And you also, nurses can use this as a barrier because remember you need a waterproof barrier for your bag. Sometimes I, I used to, for a company that I used to work for, I used to just get them from the Dollar Tree, honey, because they didn't, they wasn't giving you nothing like that. I'm just being honest. Oh, these are different wound care supplies. Nurses, we definitely need these. You can measure your wounds with them, especially the Q-tips. Measure the depth of your wounds with the Q-tips. Uh, a CPR face shield is in here. CPR face shield. Some different syringes have different sizes of syringes. These are medium. Mediums are typically 10 ml. So I have that. A specimen cup here. Uh, some gauze sponges here. There's quite a bit of stuff in here, guys. More for when you're um, the transferring the blood device when you're taking a blood sample in the home. Okay. Da, 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 da. More, these are IV dressing sponges here. So a lot of this stuff I probably will never use, but I also, I do keep it. Steri strips, I use these often because I see a lot of post-op patients. So, ah, I love these. Because often the uh, iodine sticks, I often get patients uh, where the doctor wants All right, guys, the camera just shut off, but we're going to keep the show going. These are border gauzes. These are very, very, are they like a two by two? 
They are a a one by one. I don't even think I've ever seen border guys this small. But these will be helpful for a little skin tear or something like that that you need to immediately take care of. These are border guys as well. Four by fours right here. These are the typical ones that I would typically use for a incision, for a surgical incision. A lot of um, doctors, especially after they take off the initial Mepilex or Aquacel, Pico, Provena dressing, something like that, they'll order this for a daily dressing. I think we already came across these, but we have more. Honey, us nurses, we don't be complaining about more supplies, but I'll just put those right there because we do have more of those. And these here are sure size. These are for your pick line dressings. So typically, if I open up a patient, I will change their pick line dressing for the first bit on the first visit. These are transparent film dressings. Again, you can use these for, uh, they're for vascular. So again, this will be something that you would use for your pick line dressing. These are derma thins. These are for wounds. So we'll talk about that in the wound care video. These here, zero form. Also you'll use them for wounds, skin tears, burns, different things like that. Especially we use a lot of these for burns when I worked in facilitated environments uh, to keep it from being sticky when you remove the actual dressing for the patient. Uh, okay, y'all know what this for when we be drawing that blood, drawing that blood, drawing that blood. <laughs> and I think we did just about everything. Oh, this is for measuring. I think we went through one of just about everything that was in this bag, other than they gave me a little thing, looks like a sterile water right there. Also, check your expiration dates. This one doesn't expire until 2026. Check your exp expiration dates. That is something you can get tagged for if you're out in the field or you just don't want to be using supplies that are expired. Alcohol wipes, we always use those. More blood collecting. Oh, another specimen container. So that's right there. Urine collection. More for collection for blood. So they hooked your girl up. I, I'll say it again. The you not giving me supplies is a huge red flag as to uh, the company how they you know take care of their patients and don't take care of their patients. I understand that uh, wound care supplies and different things like that are costly and you should be very cost effectively, you know, have that cost effect in your mind when using it. We're going to be talking about wound supplies, how much wound supplies you should order, how much stock and different things like that in the wound care video. This is more paper tape. The one we had earlier was wider, so this is not as wide. More curl -X. And we have scissors. Wound care scissors. I have some wound cleanser that's in here. Thank you cards. I love this because what you can do is especially by me doing a lot of starter cares, I don't see the patient after that. And I love the fact that I can just send them a thank you card for letting me be a part of their care team. More wound care supplies that fell out of this Ziploc bag of wound care supplies. We'll just put that back in there. Uh, more syringes, and these are more scissors as well here. So those are some more scissors back there. More syringes, more. This is going to go back in this bag right here. The other two items that's here, one item I won't take out. Well, I'll take, uh, okay, they have it in a folder that's not labeled. This is a starter care folder pack. The company that I'm working for now, they're ones that they, with their name and stuff on the front, they are not in stock right now. They're waiting on it to come. So the ones that they did give me where they just had some folders that they purchased to put them in. So this will be a starter care folder. I thought that our name was on here. If it wasn't, I would not, if it was, I wouldn't have taken it out for privacy reasons. I don't let people on the internet know where I work. And this is a good old trusty Hopkins, Hopkins, home health bag. If you are a home health nurse, I'm sure you know what this looks like. You have seen it before. It's pretty standard. It's a really good bag and it lasts for a long, long time. 
So I won't go through it now because I am going to be doing a what's in my bag video that's a part of this series. So I'm going to talk about the things that's in my bag. Uh, if you've been around for a long time, you know I have two home health bags. And we'll discuss that further in that video. I've been making uh, plans to make that video for the longest and I haven't made it. So I do apologize for that. But we're going to get that video out to you all. What's in my bag? I'm also going to show you all how I supply my, how I stock my trunk. So I'm going to show you all what of these supplies actually made the cut and actually makes it to my trunk. Ah, it was a fun time making this video for you all. More and more content to come. Expect the budgeting content expect all of the things expect broke, broke nurses to be back soon and also expect our weekly like just weekly updates and different things like that my weekly um my weekly prep to get my week started it's a fun time questions concerns you know complications all of those things if you have any questions if you have any video suggestions or anything like that that you would like me to make down in the comments, you can reach me at According to Tawanda. Same thing as the channel name, According to Tawanda at gmail.com. Bye.